Hey there, it's Aviva from Elementor. Welcome back to How to Build a Blog in Elementor. In the last lesson, we learned the different ways of adding new posts to our blog and went over article structure and blogging best practices. In this lesson, we'll see how we can customize the single post template of our kit and go over style options for posts written in the default Gutenberg editor. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and let's get started. We'll begin with a preview of the post we created in our last lesson using the Gutenberg editor. As we can see, this article's text style doesn't match the fonts and colors we've set in the global styles, but we'll see how to correct it in just a moment. Let's start customizing the post template. Use the finder to access the theme builder. Choose single post and click edit. In order to see which changes need to be applied, we can select a specific post to preview. Click the gear icon and under preview settings, go to the second dropdown and search for our post. Hit the button to update the preview. Perfect. Before we make any changes, let's explore this post and see what we've got here. First, we have this article image. If we click this widget, we'll notice it's taken from the featured image field. By clicking the gear icon, we can set a fallback image in the event that the image does not load properly. Continuing to the right column, we have this post info widget showing the date this post was published. This widget allows us to add useful information for our visitors, such as terms, usually used to add tags or categories, provide the number of comments made on this article, and more. By clicking the headline, we can see it's actually a post title widget which automatically takes information from the article we've created in WordPress. This is one of many post-related widgets designed to streamline the single post creating process. Scrolling down, we can see our post's content. However, we can't actually edit it from here. This is because this widget, Post Content, dynamically takes its content from the article we created in the previous lesson but we can keep editing this template starting with the sidebar here. Let's change it a bit to fit Xander's brand. First, we'll change the text and adjust the style. We can also integrate and connect our email marketing platform to our form. We'll leave the related links in the description. Next, we'll change the image. Scrolling further down, we'll find this widget, which helps direct our readers to either an older or a newer post. Since we're viewing the newest article on Xander's blog, we only see this Older Stories button. We also have these Share buttons, which are integral for reaching a wider audience. We can choose from and set the different platforms available for sharing as well as change the button style, like using icons instead of text. Great. Next up, we have the post comments widget, which as its name implies, allows our readers to reply to our article. Like the post content widget, this widget inherits its style from our site's theme. We'll see how to customize this in a moment. And lastly, we have the posts widget, which displays more articles. Use the layout settings to choose how our posts will be displayed. and the query settings to control which posts to display and in what order. 
we can control the post's pagination settings in the Pagination tab. Now let's see how to style the typography within the post content and the replies widgets. Global fonts can be applied directly only to content created in the Elementor editor. Recall that we created this post outside Elementor in the Gutenberg editor, so we'll use theme style to adjust how our post looks. Click the hamburger menu and head over to site settings. Remember, this blue header indicates we're editing settings that will be applied throughout our site. Under theme style, click typography. In the last lesson, we mentioned the importance of content hierarchy using different headings. This screen allows us to style each individual heading, as well as the text and different links throughout our site. Let's begin by adjusting the body style using our global colors and fonts. We can also control the space between paragraphs, as seen here. Next, we'll set the link's color, as well as for the hover effect, if needed. Since H1 is set by our design, there is no need to adjust this style, so we'll skip directly to H2. We'll set the color and the typography. We'll do the same for H3. We'll leave the rest of the headings as is for now. If we ever need to adjust them in the future, we can always come back here. Scrolling back down, we can see this Post a Comment button is still styled using the default theme colors. To change this, go back to Site Settings, Buttons, and adjust the button style as needed. We can also style other elements, such as images and form fields. I'll take a moment now to style the form fields. Feel free to go ahead and update your own styles as well. Once everything is ready, we'll hit the Update button to save our changes and go back to editing our page. Great! We've adjusted this template and its style to match Xander's brand, but we're really just getting started. When we create a blog, we want to ensure our posts are easy to read and credible. There are several widgets that help us do that, and we'll start with the table of contents. Elementor's Table of Contents widget helps you organize your page content based on the levels of hierarchy of your heading tags and makes it easier for your site visitors to navigate your WordPress website. However, this widget generates its headings automatically, which means that sometimes it might generate irrelevant headings, as we see here. To filter out unnecessary headings, let's make sure this widget only pulls content from the article itself. To achieve this, click the Post Content widget, go to Advanced, and in CSS ID, type in My-Content. Back in the Table of Contents, type in the pound sign, or hashtag, and My-Content. This lets Elementor know we want to pull only the headings within an element that have the My-Content ID. Now all that's left to do is style the widget to our liking.
We can also use the excerpt widget and place it right above the table of contents, so our visitors will start with a more concise initial view. This way, Xander's readers have a short intro and this handy table of contents that offers them easy navigation throughout the post. Next, to add more credibility to our posts, we'll let visitors know whose article they're reading. Scroll to the bottom of the article, and in Widgets, search for and drag in the Author Box widget. This widget pulls the article author's profile information. Xander is currently the only author in his blog, but a common strategy bloggers use to increase their audience reach is to include guest authors on their blogs. Adding a short bio will strengthen the author's credibility. To edit this information, we'll go back to the WordPress dashboard, but before we do, we'll click Update to save all changes. Then, using the Finder, we'll go to Users and click the user whose details we want to change. We can add a user's first and last name and set how this user's name will be displayed throughout our site. Lastly, we'll add Xander's bio and change his profile picture. When it comes to an author's bio, it's recommended to keep it concise, but don't forget to remind your readers why they should listen to you. The profile image, however, is controlled by Gravatar. If you don't already have a Gravatar account, click this link, sign up using the same email you use as your WordPress login, and set a new image. Note that this image will follow you in every WordPress website you comment on or any other system that may be using Gravatar as well. Now that we're done, make sure to save your changes and back in the single post template, we can see that the information we've just added was automatically updated. Cool, but let's make a few changes to make sure it matches the site's style. Click the author box and go to the style tab. Adjust the image size and change the text's color. This already looks much better, but we can add a small change to make the author box pop a bit more and separate it from the article content. Go to Advanced and add a small gap using padding. Next, add a border and adjust its width. Perfect. And let's make sure not to forget to adjust any changes we've made to mobile devices by using responsive mode. And that's it. We now have a fully customized article post on our page. In the next lesson, we'll see how to make small adjustments to our archive template and even create category or tag specific archive templates. So be sure to keep watching. See you there.